cheers. <laughs> How are you today? Good. So we're back with another episode of Bourbon and Booze on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We try whiskey and we're going to try one of my favorites. So I got our glasses lined up. Yeah, it's something. No. One thing is not like the other. It's about the same size. No, I don't think so. It's my new Glen Karen. It's uh, <laughs> this a margarita is what, glass. When so. I drink this, this is what I want. So we are going to be trying a uh, favorite of mine that I don't know if it's actually available anymore. Uh, this is the Ben Millam Straight Bourbon um, out of the Ben Millam Distillery here in Texas. This is actually only bottled by them. It's actually um, from Tennessee. So it's a Tennessee bourbon. It's sourced Tennessee bourbon. It's their straight barrel or single barrel straight uh, bourbon whiskey. Comes in at $45, which I think is pretty reasonable for a um, local craft whiskey. Of course, like I said, this is um, sourced. 43% or 86 proof. 43% 86 proof. No age statement. Uh, the reason I say it may not be available anymore is because um, Ben Millam has had an evolution kind of change. They got Heather Green. Uh, she's a famous whiskey sommelier type of person. She's not a sommelier, but um, bartender. She writes books about whiskey. She's um, on a lot of the whiskey uh, tasting competitions as a judge. She lived in Scotland and did a whole bunch of stuff. I think she was one of the first females on the Scotch Whiskey Association uh, group. So um, she's really, if you know whiskey, she's really famous. Uh, and she is partnered with Ben Millam. So now it's called Millam and Green. And they have just released the first um, locally uh, produced uh, Millam and Green whiskey. Quite expensive over a hundred bucks. So I don't know if that is going to be replacing the old Ben Millam uh, bottles. So uh, this is one of my favorites for Texas. It is a Tennessee whiskey, so a Tennessee bourbon. So I'm not sure what the process of filtration is. I didn't really see if it's a charcoal filtered uh, bourbon whiskey type of thing or what. So it's a source, they're sourcing it and aging it in yes, Texas. Yes, they're aging it here in Texas. But it qualifies as a bourbon. Because it's from... No, it doesn't have to be anywhere. Okay. It has to be from America. It qualifies for a bourbon of, because of its mash bill makeup and how long it's um, aged in a um, new American oak barrel. Any more questions? All right, let's get with this review. Very, very tasty. When we don't talk, it becomes really quiet in here, and then you can hear pitter patters of the bar dog walking. <sighs> Okay, so I am always been impressed with this. They have a rye that I've been um, pining for, I really want. Hmm. Okay. At $45, this is going to be a um, a one barrel. So it's hampered by the cost. 
I've completely messed up our scale here. I think I like this one. You think you like this? You're not sure? Okay, at 45... You need to drink some more to figure it yeah. out. So I had my big glass. At $45, this is a one barrel. Uh, for aroma, what do you give it? I gave it a four. A four? Why four? It smells really good, but it's not like... I guess maybe because I'm a... A scotch guy. Okay. So we, it, we've talked about this before. Really good is not very descriptive. Yeah, it's got the nice cherry, okay. the kind of the chocolate smell. I mean, it's it's super pleasant. And okay. I, that was the four. I just gave it the four when I just first smelled it. So I also gave it a four. It's got that tart cherry, um, vanilla, caramel, but it's also got a spearmint. Um, I was going to say that, and I didn't want to be like, I don't smell all spearmint. <laughs> It's got a little bit of a spearmint um, yeah. next to it. Um, it's very light and delicate on the nose. There's no real ethanol burn to it. So I did give it a four. I could even give it a higher rating. Uh, the only thing that's holding me back from a perfect five is I know this is sourced. I would I would be, if this was them. Local. Local, then I'd probably boost it up because I think, you know, They, they, they've crafted it, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. I'm trying to figure that out. For aroma, I gave it a four. I said um, you could taste that dark chocolate, that vanilla now. I'm getting the vanilla and the cherry. Um, not really the spearmint on the taste, more in the uh You're talking aroma. about the flavor. You yes, gave the it flavor. A, I gave it a five. Okay, explain yourself. Well, I was... Kind of like between a four and a five, but when I put a couple drops of water in it, okay, it kind of just it makes it just like a nice smooth mouth fill. Mouth fill or mouth fill? <laughs> mouth. Okay. I have a mouth. Anything else? No, it's silky smooth. Okay. It's just. It's so pleasant. It... I agree with you. I gave it a four, though. Um, I actually thought the drop of water kind of spoiled the away. flavor. Yeah. Um, brought out the alcohol bitterness a little bit more, and I don't really like that. So this would be definitely something I drink straight, not with water. Might try an ice cube or something, but or a cold stone cube. I gave it a four. I'm fine with the five. In fact, we are going to have to do some modification Adjusting. for um by i gave it a four you gave it a five there's no real bite there's to no it bite no to ethanol it at all. um but it is you know 86 proof so it's got a little bit of a sting we have a new family audience uh participation in the bar that Keeps hasn't quite learned to uh control themselves not hit their head yeah. on the wall so overall, 13 points for me, 15 for you. It's a three to three and a half barrel, but this is not a three. I would give it a four yeah. for sure. So I've already busted up to a four. This is the, what's going against this is the price. Of course, you know, $45 isn't that bad. Um, yeah, because most craft whiskeys is 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. So this, and of course, this is just uh, sourced. So, so. Their actually produced whiskey bourbon is like over a hundred now. So when you um, source whiskey, you get it. Is it clear? And mm -hmm. then they. I think it varies how you're getting it, but if you want to classify it as some sort of like um, specific thing, like a Kentucky bourbon, then it's got to be uh, aged in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. But this is just a bourbon, so it's going to be... In fact, it's actually listed as a Tennessee... Um, I don't know where I saw that. I think I saw it on the back. Yeah, aged and bottled by um, Provision Spirit and Blanco, um, distilled in, in Tennessee. 
So it may have come cleared and they just completely And they char the new barrels and yeah. put it in there. It's just like... Uh, ben Millam or Millam and Green is a place that's not too far from here. Um, it's in the center of really the Texas craft whiskey hill country. Kind of like Fredericksburg and... Uh, Blanco. So you in Blanco you have... In that general vicinity, you have Deep Eddy, you have um, Garrison Brothers, you have Andalusian, you have uh, Schitt's Creek, you have Flanagan's, you have Crowded Barrel. I mean, you have a whole group right there. So uh, it's well worth to visit that area because you could hit a lot. Austin still, or still Austin, and Austin's not far. Uh, That's another Treaty reason. Oak, Treaty Oak is in that area. So there's a lot of places you could hit up in just a couple days. That's another reason to love the Texas Hill Country. Mm -hmm. It's, I think nowhere else, and we're making this video longer than I wanted, but nowhere else um, except for like Spaceside, Scotland, or Kentucky, like the Louisville, yeah, Bargetown area. Do you mass. have, yeah, that I know of that you have this mass grouping of, of, of distilleries. Yeah. So tell us what you think about craft whiskey in general. What's your favorite Texas craft whiskey? And Texas is just, there's two camps out there that dominate. Actually, there's almost three. You have the uh, Garrison Brothers, which is the first craft whiskey here in Texas. And then you have the Balconis Army, or Balconies, however you want to say it. Army, um, those guys are not the distillery, but the people who like Balconis are fanatical. <clears throat> And then you have uh, TX in Fort Worth. It's you got a lot of TX fanatics um, missing out on so much more. But tell yeah. us what your favorite Texas craft whiskey is. What's your t uh, favorite craft whiskey in general? What should we try next? Have you tried the new Milliman Green? Are you sending the new Milliman Green to us at Bourbon and Booze? We'll probably we'll do a review. We'll on review it. and drink it and say your name. Uh, <laughs> Remember, hit the like and subscribe. Check out Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and merchandise. Remember, there's no bad whiskey. There's only good whiskey and great whiskey. This, this is, is great whiskey. This is great whiskey. Pick it up while it's still available. Cheers. Bye. Laters.